Hello, welcome to our lesson today on coping with stress, methods, support, and management. First, let's go over a couple of basics. Psychology is the study of mental and behavioral processes. Psychopathology is the study of mental, emotional, and behavioral disorders or dysfunctions, and at the core of psychopathology are maladaptive behaviors. Stressors are those things in the environment which challenge or threaten a person. Divorce, financial problems, traffic, exams, work, and so on are all things that people identify as stress. But anything that challenges us is stress, even positive things. Things like a new relationship, buying a house, losing weight are energizing, rewarding, and challenging, and are still also stress, and so they are called eustress. Most people think of stress as something that does or could negatively impact our ability to function in life or gain something that we want. Um, and so today we're going to talk about some methods of coping with or managing stress. The first thing we're going to talk about is social support. Close positive relationships are very important in dealing with stress. It promotes good health and boosts morale, and it acts as a buffer from stressful events, decreasing the impact they have on the person. People with these close supportive relationships have better health and better immune responses, even in, in periods of stress. Social support helps with stress management, which is the use of behavioral and cognitive strategies which increase coping and decrease stress. When stressful situations come up, whether it's moving into a new house or struggling with financial troubles, using social support to come up with a stress management plan can help decrease the impact of stress on your mental, emotional, and physical health. Now there are two main tactics in coping with stress, and the first one we're going to look at is emotion-focused coping. In this strategy, the person you focuses on controlling their emotional reaction related to the stress. So in using this coping strategy, the person might respond to their emotions by exercising, or um, which increases endorphins and decreases muscle tension. They may seek support from family, friends, or professionals, or they may distract themselves with music, movies, books, etc. The second technique is problem-focused coping, and in this method, the person focuses on what they can do to address the challenging or threatening situation head-on. This method includes the use of action plans um, with different steps that address the situation, and the person focuses on what they can do to address the problem and then they take the next step in their action plan. These methods are helpful, but it can also be helpful to know how our body acti bodily activities are being affected by or affecting our ability to handle stress. Biofeedback is one way of monitoring these bodily activities. In biofeedback, the person is hooked up to different machines which monitor things like temperature, heart rate, muscle tension, etc. As the monitors give feedback to the person, they can learn to control things that generally um, are considered to be out of their control. Through guidance in the biofeedback process, the person can learn to control their muscle tension and other bodily states. Though originally thought to be a cure-all for anxiety and a variety of other problems, it's not proven to be a cure, but it does show promise in areas of general relaxation and self-regulation of things like blood pressure, heart, ry heart rhythms, and muscle tension. It seems to have helped some people decrease migraines, headaches, and other chronic pain. Biofeedback isn't magic. It doesn't perform any tasks for the person. It just helps the person make changes in their response to stress and help with general relaxation and more positive stress responses. In conclusion today, we talked about social support and its, its role in um, responding to and managing stress. We talked about stress management and what that is. We looked at emotion-focused and problem-focused coping techniques. 
And we talked about biofeedback as a method of learning more about how your body responds to stress and controlling those things that we don't always think are within our control. This concludes our lesson today on stress, coping with stress management and techniques. And thank you for participating.